Hello and welcome. I'd like your full attention while I briefly go through some safety concerns in this short workplace safety presentation. There are three key steps towards safety in the workplace. Identifying the risk, assessing the risk, controlling the risk and reviewing its effectiveness. Put simply, the best way to prevent injuries or illness is to find potential hazards and fix them. Please take the next few moments to consider the following key procedures. Wherever possible, eliminate the risk. Simply remove the hazard completely. Substitute the hazard. Substitute or replace a hazard with a piece of equipment or work practice that negates risk. Isolate. Isolate the hazard or hazardous work practice. Engineering controls. Adapt tools or equipment to minimise the risk. Administrative controls. Change work practices or implement more training. And of course, make sure personal protective equipment is worn when required. Safety is an ongoing practice. Just because it's safe today, doesn't mean it's safe tomorrow. The hazards presented by chemicals can vary. High toxicity, flammability, continuous exposure, or through unseen vapours or skin contact. Unseen vapours or chemical contact with skin can be harmful and need to be considered all the time. Relatively harmless chemicals are often overlooked and it can be the continuous exposure that becomes the hazard. Being familiar with the chemicals that you're working with is vital. Always read and understand the labels before use. As part of the hair and beauty industry, we are constantly exposed to a range of chemicals um, and employers and employees need to be aware of this exposure and need to deal with this on a regular basis to make sure that the exposure is reduced to a minimum. The accumulative effect of working with chemicals on a daily basis needs to be something that's brought to the attention of employers and employees. These products can cause extreme reactions in the workers, uh, such as asthma, extreme dermatitis, even cancer um, can be a result of working with these chemicals. In the hair and beauty industry in South Australia, we've developed a document to assist workers and employers to have a better understanding of the chemicals that they're working with and the conditions that they should provide to protect the safety of their staff. Chemicals can pose a range of health and safety problems in workplaces. Even chemicals which you think are fairly safe can be a problem if used in large amounts or for long periods of time or if mixed with other chemicals. Sometimes it's the working environment itself that can be hazardous. When chemicals can't be readily identified, they must be treated as hazardous. Chemicals plus heat is a particularly dangerous combination. Now working in the Metropolitan Fire Service, uh, is a hazardous occupation. Firefighters face many incidents which involve uh, manufactured textiles and synthetics that these days can create hazards for firefighters when involved in fire. The products of combustion can constitute a major health risk for firefighters. Firefighters returning from a fire can carry contaminants on their clothing and return them into their work environment back at the fire station. In order to prevent this from happening, the fire service has introduced a dirty to clean fire station concept. In that way, firefighters returning from a fire can move from a designated dirty zone and decontaminate and move through to a clean area to ensure that no products of combustion that can cause a hazard to their health can move into that work environment. In certain situations like firefighting, we don't know what chemicals we're likely to encounter in these fires, so we need a very rigorous system for managing chemical hazards. Things like the right personal protection, 
and also the right clean-up procedures are important. Pictograms are an easy to understand method of identifying most types of chemical hazards, as are signal words, hazard statements and precautionary statements. In essence, always check before taking action. In Veolia, we handle lots of different chemicals, ranging from the grease traps to the acids to the small hydrochloric acids which can burn straight through your bones and um, small chemicals which come from your labs, your universities. With the acids, if something goes wrong with that, it could be a major accident happen and um, someone could be burnt or even death. Remember, this means handling as well as storing chemicals. Fumes, vapours and spillages are as dangerous as contact. My view on the workplace safety, I think my guys come to work, they're happy, they're healthy. If during the day, if they do their work, they stick by their risk assessments, JCAs, do it the way they've been trained, they'll go home nice and happy and come back the next day all safe and sound. There are many aspects of chemical hazards in the workplace. You need to know what chemical you're using, what control measures are relevant for that particular chemical and process, in order to prevent health and safety problems in the short and the long term. Even if you consider the chemicals you're working with to be low risk, please ensure you read any chemical safety data sheets. It's a legal requirement to keep a hazardous chemical register. Safety data sheets, labels, placarding, fire protection and equipment. All workplace hazardous chemicals need to be classified according to the globally harmonised system of classification and labelling of chemicals, GHS. Be aware and be safe. <laughs>